Amazon have doubled down on the Rings of Power marketing strategy, which is basically to get fan sites and YouTubers, content creators on board, give them free trips, free interviews, and free stuff and then send them out in the hopes that they all just coincidentally say that no no rings of power is amazing it's really good and i say double down this is essentially a marketing strategy they used for the wheel of time they did the same thing with youtubers and fan sites there gave them trips to various different red carpet premieres interviews with the cast and then after all that they just all happen to simultaneously give every single episode a fantastic review purely coincidental i'm sure and then with Rings of Power, we saw the now infamous Superfans videos, where they got people who occasionally knew what they were talking about, but largely didn't, to just go off to a castle on an all-expenses-paid event, see one minute of video, and then obviously talk about all the key points that they needed to talk about, but also to talk about how amazing it all was, which I'm sure was all helped by the free booze, and the fact that they were in a castle. But now Amazon have got one step further, they've gone to actual Lord of the Rings fan sites with huge followings, rather than just people no one has ever heard of on TikTok before. And what result did they get? Yes, predictably, they all thought it was amazing. Because we start with the one ring.net, you know these people, the people which did the official live stream for the trailer. Yeah, that's really a sign of 100% unbiased reporting when you're doing the official live stream for the trailer. But they do have an interesting thing to say about everyone else's opinion of the trailer. Because while they go on to wax lyrical about how great the trailer is, which is exactly what I would expect from them, they start to talk about other people, including how several people were prepared to snicker. And once the footage rolled out, we all saw friendly elbows and fingers pointed at the screen and smiles. This was like a Disney movie as everyone got won over by it. And the best part was when everyone positively shared their love. But it gets worse when they say that while they did have a huge variety of opinions and perspectives, they actually all agreed afterwards and were all incredibly excited. And then they go on to actually trash the Peter Jackson trilogy. Oh no, all these characters are so much better than the Peter Jackson trilogy. You know, the movie trilogy, which is almost universally loved. Yeah, the Rings of Power is just way better than that. Because let's face it, when you want to go and shill for a product, there is such a thing as laying it on too thick to make it absolutely farcical. And uh, I think this tweet kind of went over that line. <laughs> because what we had was an incredible amount of people. Oh no, all these authority figures, the authority figures from the public, these people think this. And what they think it is, is it's actually far worse than what you've already seen. So what we've done is we've name dropped their authority. Then we've dragged something down to lower the quality bar from what to expect. And then we hit you with the final part of the tweet diatribe. And that is that your opinion should all obviously be calmed because these people, which obviously know far more than you about Lord of the Rings and indeed what you actually enjoy, uh, these people liked it. I mean, it only took them three hotels, a goodie bag and a trip around London, all expenses paid for them to like it. But after all that, they did like it. Or at least that's what they're going to tell you. Now, the free gifts is where we should probably start because that really prepared them to see their content. Look at this. Wow, a Rings of Power hoodie. It's like a nice moisture resistant material. A Rings of Power journal. Man, that is cool. And an Instamax Mini 90 Neo Classic. Nice gesture, a little care package for the long trip. Now admittedly, all the stuff are things that they could make an excuse for. A raincoat because Quite frankly, they've probably seen the weather in the UK during summertime. And then you've got a book to make notes in, and a camera, because you might need to take photographs. But I feel a little Blizzard-esque here when I say, do you guys not have phones? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? Now at this point, I should probably say that I'm not accusing anyone of objectively lying or getting stuff and then just changing their opinion because of it. That's not really the point. My point is that this changes perception. It gets people on side. It makes it impossible to be unbiased because it is a conflict of interest when you get free stuff, a free trip, interviews and access and then try to actually give your honest opinion about something. Because while it still may be your honest opinion, it will have inevitably have been influenced by what came before it. And we know this happens not just through thousands of years of actually human behavior, but also because they did it. And they wouldn't have done it if it didn't have an effect. This has been done as long as business deals are being done. You get people get taken out, wined and dined. Why? Because it works. 
and wined and dined they did for a day and a half, in fact. They got taken around Oxford on a coach tour and taken to various places which are either Tolkien related or bookstore related and even eventually going to the pub where Tolkien used to be, which was even under renovation and was specifically opened for them. This was rolling out the red carpet in every sense of the word. And then on the next day, they got a Q&A with the showrunners, which changed various ones of their opinion. Because before you got treated to a nice event, these people have done loads for you. They've given you free stuff. They've made you feel really welcome in the country. You're in that great, happy tourist mode. And then you meet the showrunners. And the showrunners are really friendly. They make you feel welcome. So now you've got to put a face to the work. And nobody likes to destroy the work of somebody that they see as a friend that they've actually met. And people even said that their opinions were changed by this Q&A. Not because of the content that they saw, not because of the 20 minutes of footage, but because their excitement and passion was contagious. So talking with the showrunners, I will say that in particular, Patrick's enthusiasm was kind of contagious. And so that gives me some confidence. I mean, that's not nothing. The thing is, I don't care about the person making a show. I don't care how excited that person is. I care about the quality of the show. It's like Doctor Strange 2. I don't really care who made it or directed it or filmed it or what their influence was. I just know the movie was trash. But when you go and meet the showrunners and then afterwards you say that it was their emotion which changed your opinion of the show, I think that's exactly what I mean when I say that this stuff will influence you and you can no longer be objective. And I'm not saying that receiving the stuff is bad in and of itself. It was all declared so anyone watching the video knows full well exactly what this person went through and how it's going to make their opinion unreliable. The issue I've got is when the people are going, no, my opinion is reliable, and you should just ignore anyone pointing out what I've been through and how it's going to influence my opinion. It's like, no, if you're going to accept free stuff, I don't really care. But let's not pretend that you're objective anymore. And then you've got the strange people on Twitter that were trying to shame anyone that was speaking out about this, who was pointing out that this is a clear conflict of interest. Oh, I can't believe that you've dared impugn their honor that they may have their opinion changed by something that would literally affect every human on Earth. This isn't a comment about individuals. This is a comment about general human behavior and something that everyone is susceptible to. And, and like I say, I don't have a problem with anyone going on this and then saying their opinion afterwards. But let's not pretend that it's now an objective opinion. Because it can't be. So why is this happening? Because this event actually took place a little while ago and now they're only just talking about it and they all came out at the same time to talk about it and release all their footage. This is common where people will be under NDA for an event and then can only talk about their experiences at a certain time. But they haven't been able to talk about all of it. Yeah, they were allowed to say that they went to it and exactly what happened, presumably to get all of that drama out of the way before they actually get to the meat of the event. And that was the footage. At some point, presumably, we will see more footage. And when that comes, I imagine that's when everyone else's opinions of it will drop. And that is exactly the point of this. It was the same for Wheel of Time, and it was the same for the Lord of the Rings trailer. What they attempt to do is get content creators and other people on side, give them a special curated event that they can go to, and after they've got all of this free stuff, these free events, and been influenced about as much as you could do, and now they're fearing about losing access in the future, that's when you get them to send out their opinions. And so, when the new content drops, they drop it at the same time, and those are the only videos that you can see in the first wave. Because the content drops, their opinions drop, and the idea is presumably, they get all the views, their stuff gets pushed to the top, and that is the plan. All you get hit with is positive, 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 all the way down, and now later, all of the other people may come with their different opinions about what they saw. The people which didn't go to the event and weren't influenced by it. But at that point, they're hoping it's too late, that their stuff gets drowned out by the sheer number of views on all of the quicker content that was out there, the, the ones which are allowed to be created in advance. And this isn't just for TV, this happens in the gaming industry and everything else. It's an extremely common tactic, and it's one they used for the Wheel of Time. It's one they used for the original trailer, and they're just repeating it now, but with bigger content creators. Because it clearly didn't work with the trailer, they got the wrong people. Now they're trying it with others. And I think the question of access is a big one. Because this could have easily have been done by just sending them the footage in their home. Now they wouldn't have been able to influence their opinion so much, which is why they didn't do it. But they could have done. And even if that happened to people in advance, 
you still have the question of access. Because the people which put their videos out first, the people that get that footage in advance, they will inevitably get more views on their videos and their channels will grow and everything else because they got access to it first. And the fact that if you say something negative about that footage and then you could have your early access revoked, that fear is often enough to influence people, whether consciously or not. Maybe it's not enough to prevent someone from saying that it's not bad, but maybe it is enough to stop them calling something trash, and then instead they go, ah, this could have been better. This stuff matters. You can say your honest opinion. It's just your honest opinion which has been influenced by everything I've spoken about before. And so while I'm sure in any industry you're going to get a range of people, some which are incredibly willing to have a flexible opinion depending on what they get, and others which are a lot more firm and less influenced and more honest. I think the idea that you can go through all this stuff and still be objective is naive at best. And I have no problem with anyone doing it as long as it's all out in the open. This is what we did, this is what we got. As long as the people know which are watching your video or reading your opinions know what you got for free, they can make their own judgments. They're big boys, I'm sure they'll know how to handle it and be able to uh, work out any influence of an opinion, at least for this video. But the issue is, this isn't just a one-time opinion, is it? Is that all going to get mentioned when the footage get comes out with those opinions? When the show comes out, is it going to be mentioned there? There's so many issues that actually comes on from these kind of knock-on effects, you begin to run into problems very quickly. But the reason I'm making this video isn't so much because of what happened, it is because of the attitude that was taken. It was the attempt to shame people that would dare point out that this makes people biased. That anyone would dare comment on these glorious people that they could possibly be influenced by a free trip to a different country, stays in hotels and free booze. Yes, you can't possibly impugn somebody else's honor. Or the idea that, yes, I had all of this stuff, but don't worry, don't worry, definitely didn't influence me in the least. Like, I have no problem with anyone doing it, but let's not pretend that there aren't legitimate concerns that arise when this kind of stuff happens. And that is about where I stand on it. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe, more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.